so it ended. A tale that began with my own ill-fated attempt to rid the world of the gods. When the dust settled, no new divine had risen. Instead, all source was released into the world for all the people and every creature to share. Everyone was now a sorcerer. And united, the peoples of Rivalon pushed back the God King into the very depths of the void. This ushered in a new golden age of peace and prosperity. But alas, it was not to last. With many greedy for wealth, power, and position, the struggle soon began anew. Source, the very language of creation, was used in violence once more. The never-ending contest for power continued. As for me, my last hope of ever being freed of the God King's terrible tyranny faded when the God Woken failed to seal the veil. An eternity of pain and suffering is mine, in service of the King, until the day I am freed, the day the God King returns. The world was at peace, at least for now. With its significance as the seat of divinity diminished, arcs fell into decline, and within seven generations had emptied. Few were as prepared for the new world as the lizard kin of the ancient empire. With power spread equally throughout the world, the advantage lay with those who knew how to steal it. And at this, the lizards excelled. With their queen dead and the void woken gone, the dwarves held the greatest party in the history of dwarfdom. A new king took the throne, the local brewer, Six days later, he was stabbed to death with a mutton fork. With their power returned, the elves reclaimed their lands from the death fog and began to rebuild. Soon they would split as two factions sought power, one to bring back the trees, the other to bring back the scions. A dwarven joke did the rounds. It ends with the punchline, so Lucian dropped the death fog on them again. And in a dark forest on the far side of a desert, well beyond the high seas, the Black Ring came together once more. The island of Fort Joy, the old redoute of the Source King Bracchus Rex, was turned over to the people of Driftwood to use as they wished. They turned it into a holiday resort. Reaper's Coast prospered. The fisheries returned, and the fertile farmlands produced the greatest harvests the surviving farmers had ever seen. Blood Moon Island became particularly fecund, its soil producing the greatest crops. A particularly crimson-fleshed orange grown on the island became a delicacy across half the world. The Black Pits took fire, the oil there burns still. Driftwood became a centre of industry, trade and transport. Lohar the Dwarf became mayor. His time in office was cut short by an unfortunate wound that spontaneously appeared on his neck. Lagan left his over-demanding wife and began a relationship with a local bard. In the spirit of loving generosity, he returned the ring to his now ex-wife. In a fit of rage, she threw it into the sea. The nameless isle had vanished. 
Although only open water remained, by instinct, ships would steer clear. None of the captains could articulate why. Millennia later, adventurers would come in search of the legendary divine city of Arx and the crypt of the great Lucian. None would pass the path of blood. Young Han went into the theater and became one of the realm's most popular actors. Almira and Mihaili settled in an abandoned homestead. The locals liked and respected Almira. She never wanted for help, and deals always fell to her favor. Outsiders were often suspicious, but no local would speak against her. With no new divine, Malady found herself in a predicament. She had an important problem to solve, but no ally strong enough to call upon, and so her search continued. With the source released to the world, Ahu the wizard spent more and more time as a cat. One day he decided he would not change back. With Amadia silent, the priestess Gratiana left the swamps and re-entered the world. With more undead than ever before, she founded an abbey in the Dragonspine Mountains, offering them shelter from hatred and fear. Jehan, the demon hunter, found himself at a loose end. So, he opened a museum of demonic artifacts. After it burned down, with Jehan inside, witnesses claimed that the flames were the color of blood. As the forests grew anew and the elves were equals at last, Sahela shared elven knowledge of source with the world. But some elves disagreed and plotted against her. Chief amongst her opponents was Tova, Sahela's own mother. And then there was you. You returned to the world a sorcerer among many. Your future was yours to decide. Did you accept your new status with humility? Only you know the truth. You and one other. But of him you are free. The God King no longer calls your name. He no longer whispers your shame. Only you know if you atone for your sins. <laughs>